Welcome to the seventh module of this series, Using Structured Reports to Reduce Errors. The content of this presentation was provided by a good friend of mine, Dr. Sohail Patel at the University of Virginia. The goal of this module is for learners to understand how structured reports can be used to reduce diagnostic errors. The learning objectives are to define structured reporting, discuss the benefits of structured reporting, list common pitfalls of structured reporting, and explain strategies for implementing structured reporting. Structured reporting in radiology is variably defined. A three-tiered approach to defining structured reports has emerged with progressively greater degrees of structure. A tier one report contains common headings such as clinical indication, technique, findings, impression, and recommendation. A tier two report contains predefined subheadings in the findings section, for instance, based upon discrete anatomic structures. A tier three report contains the aforementioned structure, but additionally employs standardized language or lexicon. Here's an example of a tier one report that contains common headings. Here's an example of a tier two report containing predefined subheadings in the findings section. Here you can see specific anatomic structures listed out separately. This is an example of a tier three report employing standardized language or lexicon. The image shows a report template for a two view chest radiograph with predefined drop down choices for each anatomic site. The mediastinum choices are displayed for illustration. Structured reporting in radiology is commonly organized based on the anatomy modality. Contextual reporting is a form of structured reporting where the report structure and content are tailored to the clinical indication or diagnosis in question. On the left, you see an example of an anatomy-based structured report for a CT of the neck. On the right, this is an example of a contextual report for head and neck cancer surveillance on a CT of the neck. Structured reporting may reduce misfindings by providing a checklist of structures that should be consistently evaluated in every case. This helps to avoid missing incidental findings of significance. For example, a subheading bones on an abdomen pelvis CT report will help ensure that the radiologist examines the included osseous structures to evaluate for significant findings such as osseous metastasis or compression fracture. This also helps to mitigate against satisfaction of search error which is the tendency of radiologists to prematurely terminate their diagnostic search after making an initial diagnosis. Context-specific structured reporting may improve the quality and clinical impact of radiology reports by promoting radiologists to evaluate for specific findings pertinent to the diagnosis or clinical presentation. Brooke et al. studied structured reporting of CT exams in the setting of pancreatic cancer. The structured reports included prompts for various pertinent findings, and these reports were deemed significantly more informative with respect to surgical planning and cancer resectability than non-structured reports. I want to show you some cases that we collected when we did a retrospective study looking at cancer patients with pancreatic cancer who went on to pancreatectomy. On our retrospective review, we found that 6% of patients who went on to pancreatectomy had missed findings of vascular involvement that would have precluded pancreatectomy. None of those reports used a structured template. And you can see how if they had used a structured template with fields specific to each one of those vessels, these findings likely would not have been missed. There are many benefits of structured reporting. Structured reporting, especially those utilizing drop-down menu items, reduce the incidence of typographical or speech recognition errors. The utilization of a common and consistent lexicon improves clarity and reduces ambiguity of reports. Structured reporting promotes adherence to evidence-based clinical practice guidelines. It also improves the ability to data mine reports, facilitating research, clinical decision support, and quality improvement opportunities. These also help to ensure completeness and documentation of technique and findings, thus optimizing reimbursement for the department. There are also several potential pitfalls of structured reporting. There is a perception that structured reporting contributes to commoditization of radiologists. Structured reporting templates might promote a more fragmented approach to reporting findings and thus discourage synthesizing connections between findings. However, there is no evidence of either of these perceptions being true. A given structured reporting template might not be suitable for complex or unusual disease processes and may discourage a flexible reporting approach 
appropriate to a complex clinical scenario. If radiologists increasingly focus on filling out and adhering to a structured report template rather than viewing the images, there might be an overall decrease in radiologists' dwell time on the images. Implementation of structured reporting templates will necessarily require an adjustment of long-ingrained reporting habits and styles by some members of radiology division. This might cause, at least temporarily, a decrease in productivity. I want to show another pitfall of using a certain type of structured report, which has pre-filled fields. When you have pre-filled fields, I don't think that these are an effective approach, particularly for blind spots. This CT shows an incidental pulmonary embolus in a patient with cancer who's undergoing imaging for staging. If you look at the radiologist's report at the bottom, it says no pulmonary embolism. This is a clear pitfall of using pre-filled fields. Here are some tips for implementing structured reporting. Develop structured reporting templates in consultation with referring physicians. Now this of course doesn't apply to every type of structured report you use, such as chest x-rays or abdominal x-rays. Ensure that the report structure encourages comprehensive documentation of specific information relevant to therapeutic and management planning for patients. Develop structured reporting templates in consultation with all radiologists affected by implementation of the te template. This, of course, impacts buy-in. This may be the most challenging aspect of implementation given various reporting styles and practice habits of radiologists. The implementation of a structured reporting template for a given clinical indication might stimulate an evaluation of the imaging protocol relevant to that clinical indication. The goal is to optimize both image acquisition and radiologist reporting for a given clinical indication, such that critical information relevant to patient management is conveyed clearly and confidently to the referring physician. Structured reporting templates should also permit free text reporting to accommodate the reporting of complex or atypical cases that do not fit well within the constraints of a standard template or lexicon. It's good to incorporate evidence-based practice guidelines with standardized lexicon where possible. An example is the use of standardized language and recommendations for incidental findings based on ACR white papers. This is becoming increasingly important because we're seeing more MIPS and CMS related quality measures that measure adherence to use of evidence-based guidelines in our radiology reports. Please note that the authors of this presentation do not endorse applying financial incentives to adherence to structured reporting. If a department or section discovers low adherence to a given structured reporting template, leadership should attempt to understand the reason rather than punish radiologists. I'm going to finish off with a few examples of where structured reports and dedicated fields can be helpful. This is a case of an incidental PE that was missed by interpreting radiologists. The intervention, add a dedicated field to the report template that says lower lobe pulmonary arteries with a blank field. This will help keep radiologists honest when looking at the lower lobe pulmonary arteries. And don't forget, approximately 10% of cancer patients have incidental pulmonary emboli, and approximately 9% of inpatients have incidental pulmonary emboli. Here's an example of a patient who had a CT scan to evaluate the renal mass. In this case, there is a large right upper lobe lung cancer that is seen only on the scout view. It is not visible on any of the axial images. The intervention? add a dedicated field to the report template that says scout blank. Here's a case of a synchronous sigmoid colon cancer that was not visible on the axial images in a patient with a low rectal cancer undergoing MRI for staging. The intervention here is to add a dedicated field to the report template that says scout slash coronal T2 with a blank. The concept is very similar to the CT scout view. In this example, a peritoneal implant was missed on three consecutive CT exams by three different radiologists in a patient with colon cancer. This is a classic blind spot. The intervention, add a dedicated field to the report template that says peritoneal surface blank. Every patient with cancer should have an evaluation of the peritoneal surface. This is one of the most common misses in practices that have imaging for cancer patients. In summary, Using a structured template can help reduce diagnostic errors by serving as a checklist for blind spots, commonly missed findings, and important findings that impact staging and management, for example, pancreatic cancer staging. There are three tiers of structured reports corresponding to progressively greater degrees of structure. 
There are several pitfalls of using structured reports, including when they incorporate pre-filled fields, and applying financial incentives are unlikely to improve adherence of structured reports. In the next module, we will discuss how to use second opinions to reduce diagnostic errors.